We did it! Bruins win two one against the against the Pittsburgh Penguins and. And with this win, the Bruins clinched the goddamn playoffs! Yes! Woo! Welcome back to Into the Den, everybody. I am your host, Justin Freeman. And, oh my god. Oh my god. What a win. It's it's not even just that we won against... It's not even just that we won. We won. It's not even just that we won against the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's that we won in, like, a playoff style against the Pittsburgh Penguins. All game, I was like... Uh, there was definitely this sense of like anxiety around this game, not just because we had lost the uh, the past three games in a row, but also, uh, but also the Penguins are in are in a playoff uh, position, and again, and the entire season against uh, against teams that uh, that are in, that are currently in the uh, that are currently in a playoff position in the Eastern Conference, the Bruins are six nine and, are six nine and two, oh, and they have a sixteen point four power. Uh, power play percentage. Now, during this game, that uh, percentage would dip because, uh, because of course it would. But still, the Bruins are in the playoffs now. And thank God Carlo is back because honestly, for as much I uh, for uh, as much shit as I've given Carlo, I feel like our our defense is absolutely better with him than than without him. But uh, uh let's start off with. Literally the first minute of the game, Trent Frederick scores 49 seconds in because, by the way, Frederick was back because after, after benching him last game, because, because he kept taking way too many penalties and led to way too many scoring opportunities for the other team. And he was just really bad with puck management. And it was, he was playing some of the worst hockey of his, in his career. So we sat him against Ottawa. Uh, maybe that was the right. Maybe that wasn't the right decision because we still because we lost that game three two, uh, in one of the worst displays of hockey I've seen the Bruins, uh, in this play. But oh my god, I'm sorry that I'm freaking. Whew. Well, off the face off, he uh, he passes the puck up the boards uh, to Smith while he's getting crushed between the boards. And they end up crisscrossing around the play uh, the face off circle. Oh. Uh, uh, Smith dishes it back to Frederick, and he uh, and he goes across the net, and uh, he goes across the uh, the fucking what is it the the crease and backhands it in and past Casey to Smith one zero Boston less than a minute in, and then not long afterward, uh, it's Eric Halla would uh, would shoot across the crease. Uh, Eric Halla would get a bit of a uh, breakaway, and and he would be forced to the uh, he would be forced to the outside by. Uh, by a defenseman, and so he shoots across to uh, to Taylor Hall, who's on the far post. Uh, who's on the far post? Honest, honest. But Hall being there, uh, uh, someone being on the far post is supposed to uh, bring is supposed to uh, lead defenseman there. And so, uh, one and so a defenseman from uh, from the uh, Penguins. I honestly forget who, but a defenseman from the Penguins and and swoops in. And he doesn't see the puck. Uh, come, he probably sees the puck, but he doesn't uh, see that it's on a uh, on a trajectory for his uh, for his skate because it goes right past Casey DeSmith. But it, it goes it, it bounces off the uh, off the skate of the defenseman and right into the net, and that ends up being the second goal the, the Bruins have, and that also ends up being the last uh, goal the the Bruins have. Uh, uh, now, do I like the fact that the Bruins have a uh, that the Bruins just scored twice in like the first five minutes of the game, and then uh, and then didn't score another goal for the rest of the game. No, of course I don't. Oh, just like I don't like how the Bruins had <clears throat> the Bruins had uh, at least three power uh, uh, at least two power play uh, opportunities in this game. I think it was 
yeah, I think it was two power play opportunities this game. And we didn't score on either of them, making us 0 for our last 25 on power play. Which is a which is a stretch of power play ineptitude this team hasn't seen in seven and a half years. This this is one of the worst stretches this team has had on in special teams all teams pretty much the entire cent pretty much the entire twenty first century. I don't know about all time because I do not feel like going in through every single power play that the Bruins have had since their inception. But not, uh, but yeah, they are uh, Bruins are just awful on power play. That it doesn't mean that they're not getting good uh, opportunities. They're, they're getting plenty of opportunities. Yes, but Casey De Smith had a really good uh, had just a really good knack of just getting in front of the puck, like like necessarily being a good goaltender. That's to uh, that's to be debated. There uh, there were definitely a few uh, points where he was uh, where he was. Is is bailed out by guys like Ricardo Kell, oh, uh, Crystal Tang, and Dumoulin, and and there were, uh, I mean, you also have to take into account that uh, that uh, uh, what is it? Freaking Crystal Tang was awesome. Not Crystal Tang. Uh, shoot. Uh, why am I blanking on his? Why am I blanking on his name? I'm sorry. One sec. Uh, one second. As soon as I as soon as I stop the recording, I remember his name. Evgeny Malkin is suspended for four uh, for four games. I don't know what uh, game it's up to now. Oh, well, I think it's either his second or third game um, on the suspension. But uh, he's suspended, so uh, so they're without one of their uh, better uh, players on the uh, in uh, on offense. But I would like to ar- but I would like to argue right quick that the peng- that the Penguins' offense has shifted so that the uh, the biggest uh, the biggest threats aren't exactly Crosby or Malkin. They are they are still insane threats, but their offense has sort uh, their offense has sort of uh, prioritized Jake Gensel and Brian Rust as the uh, as the biggest contributors. And uh, and absolutely they should uh, and absolutely they should be. Uh, uh, neither of them neither of them score this uh, this game. Mm, but oh my! But uh, but there were several. There were a few opportunities where I felt they were uh, going to score, especially one in in which I think it was. Uh, I forget when this was. I think it was, it was in the second or third period. Uh, uh, Chris Letang in, in, is like up past the midline, in, but still in the neutral zone. He chips it all the way up to. Uh, he chips it high up past uh, past our defense, right to. Uh, right onto Jake Gensel's stick, and uh, and he, he just uh, and he, he goes right past our defense, and and Swayman makes an insane insane. Everybody's been crapping on Swayman, and I think this was definitely the you know, the game where he proved that like, like if you give if you give me something to work with in front of me, uh, I might actually be I might actually be better at my uh, job than your. Uh, then you're giving me credit for. Uh, that doesn't say that Swayman is like a like a selfish guy or anything like that. And uh, but like, uh, just give him something. Just give him a decent uh, defense. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he's completely invaluable. Oh no. Oh, uh, Griswick and Carlo. Oh, uh, oh, uh, just like uh, just get like seven and ten, uh, seven ten splitted uh, by uh, by Brock McGinn, who then uh, who then passes back. Uh, to Denton, uh, to Bruins legend Denton Heinen, and and Heinen just uh, uh, Heinen snipes between them from like from pretty much the bumper, or uh, like between the put, like between the faceoff circles and the uh, and the uh, neutral zone. Uh, he snipes from all the way back there, uh, and it goes uh, right past Swayman's top shoulder, uh, right past Swayman's shoulder. Uh, does Swayman need to have that? Yeah, yeah, that's. Honestly, that's a goal that uh, Swayman needs to uh, Swayman needs to have. But uh, but also, the Bruins ha- the Bruins were kind of undisciplined this game. They were they were taking a, a few really bad pal- penalties. They had, had a tripping penalty and then ki- and then killed. And then less than five seconds later, McAvoy just uh, McAvoy just trips Sidney Crosby. Uh, 
So they're going back on the power play. The Bruins played way too much of this game aimed shorthanded. And, and I mean, that's part of why we benched in Frederick last game was because he he was making too many boneheaded decisions. It, it caused us to get shorthanded. And, and that led to a bunch of scoring. But, and speaking of Frederick, he had the perfect opportunity to make this three, to make this three one. And he had the puck right on his stick. He was right up the middle. And it just bounces right over his stick. I don't know what happened, but it was just, oh my gosh. It was, it was like, I wouldn't exactly say it was like, like a Patrick Stefan, Stefan in, in type, type blunder, but it was still funny to see. But in the second period, start of the third, Bruins start out a little bit lazy, but they end up getting, but they end up getting their shit together. Or third line was fantastic in this game. Coyle and Frederick are an insane in duo. And Smith, Smith, I sort of, I sort of heard his name a few, quite a few times in a vacuum, not really on the third, not really associated with the third line. And you know, Jesper Froden was was in on the second line. I have a I have a strong suspicion that after this game, he is going to be he is going to be taken down to the uh, to the AHL. Oh, and there is a very good reason, and there is a very big reason why. Today, April sixteenth, two thousand April sixteenth is when the WHL regular season ends and the Vancouver Giants are not in the playoffs, which means Fabian Lice, Fabian Lysel oh, has the potential to be playing for the Boston Bruins this, this season. Do I think Cassidy's going to be happy about playing a young guy? No, of course not. Uh, of course not. I was joking about this with my friend Emily a few nights ago. Oh, Cassidy, Cassidy is a defensive-minded coach who – who prioritizes uh, who very much prioritizes grit not necessarily uh, grit over uh, playmaking uh, but definitely grit uh, and he plays and he hates playing young guys so great we just so uh, great the Bruins fired uh, Bruce Ka- uh, the, Bru- the Bruins fired Claude Julian in order to hire Claude Julian again uh, but uh, but anyway uh, then we get to another blunder. I mean, this was this is sort of one that uh, that's a problem with teams teams that aren't the Bruins, but it was just like, come on, uh, come on, we really let this happen. Uh, Cros- uh, Bruins, Bruins take a uh, what is it? Crosby just slashes his Frederick after like uh, at least five shots on uh, on goal from the Bruins. And the Bruins throughout the entire third period had to. Uh, were just crashing the net. They would not give a an inch of breath, uh, an inch of space to Casey DeSmith. And honestly, God bless Casey, Casey DeSmith. He he was fantastic this game. Um, um, he absolutely was. Uh, but uh, but Crosby uh, just slashes uh, slashes Trent Frederick, uh, and so Bruins are back on the power play, and we end up. Not doing anything with it. We're we're now 0 25. And then immediately afterwards, Crosby Crosby takes a stray puck and drives right to the net and drives is, is like up to the face off circles, but right, but Mike Riley is right is right in front of him and he gets his stick on between his legs. That's tripping, unfortunately. So Bruins are back on the penalty kill. And thankfully they and they Seem to really, they killed this penalty pretty well. I like, I liked how they killed this penalty. But we go into the, we go into the final five. Penguins pulled to Smith and, and oh, and this was probably the most playoff style uh, thing I've seen the Bruins do. Is I don't, I don't entirely expect all team, you know, all teams to be uh, insane on in six on five. Uh, on six on five play they like like i mean especially even not all playoff teams are great on six at six on five if sure it's sure it's 
it's like a sure it's like a makeshift penalty kill but at the same time it's but at the same time it doesn't have to end at in two minutes in two minutes and it's sure it usually only happens in the last two minutes as as it did with this game because they pulled the smith with like two minutes left but but the bruins just clamped down on defense they and they had a really hard time clearing the puck until like the last 10 seconds and where uh, where like where i think an errant pass just uh, just ended up out uh, out of the bruins zone and uh, and the penguins were really far in and they had to clear it all out and they and they couldn't get back in until like two seconds left in the game uh, but uh, that uh, but stuff like that where uh, where you're clamping hard on defense you're not giving them an inch inch even if even if you have a hard time um, um even if you have a hard time in clearing the puck it is uh, it's just the fact that you're stopping the puck as as good as you are is insane should you be clearing the puck yes absolutely should you be going better than 0 for 25 on uh, in penalty kill yet yeah, on power play yes absolutely but right now none of that matters none of that matters because the bruins made the playoffs with this game and it always feels good to make the playoffs uh, with a win and it doesn't really feel it doesn't it never feels as good when you make the playoffs uh, it's because of uh, because hey we got uh, because is hey this team won uh, this team um, beat this team by this much uh, uh, so uh yay we're in the playoffs no well no what would you rather do oh would you rather celebrate make <clears throat> would you rather celebrate making the playoffs uh, because you did something or would you rather celebrate the playoffs because somebody else did something that is my that is my question and but I think that is it for tonight's for today's episode of Into the Den. Thank you all so much for watching. Click like if you like, click subscribe if you like. Down below is my TikTok uh, and the uh, GoFundMe is for uh, Jake Tebow's recovery and uh, and family trying to flee uh, Texas. Uh, and leave a comment in, in about how good it feels to be in the playoffs because it feels amazing.